<sighs> Good afternoon, everybody. It's Dr. Heather Denniston with the Junk You Should Know show on our regular time, Friday noon PST. What are you doing this weekend? I want you to put it in the comments and say hello when you arrive. Give us a thumbs up, a hearts, or whatever you feel like doing today. I'd like to know that you're there and uh, let me know what you're doing this weekend. Today's show is called Illness to Wellness, and it comes with a very technical diagram. Okay, we're gonna get to that in a minute. Couple things, I just did a, hi, whoever just joined, I just did a great pre-record Junk You Should Know show with Dr. Noah, Noah DeCoyer out of New York, and we talked about epigenetics, epigenetics, epi, genetics and uh, it's such an exciting topic that I'm actually making it a portion of the module in the Change Cave membership uh, because it is so important. If you don't know what it is, you are gonna wanna turn in Mark, tune in March 15th to hear Dr. Noah talk about epigenetics and the impact that our life choices have on our DNA. You do not wanna miss that. Sometimes I like to do a little mini junk as we're getting started. A little mini junk you should know, and here's the latest. Uh-huh. Who's had one of these? Viva, Vivi, Vive, I don't know, Vive Organic, something. Immunity Boost. I'm in love with these. Uh, they're kind of pricey. But here's what I do. Treat myself to a couple, and then I take the empty bottle, and I make my own. Because here's what's in this one. Turmeric. Ginger root, echinacea, and black pepper. What I put in mine after I'm done enjoying this $3.50 shot that's so good for you is I do half apple cider vinegar, half lemon, a drop of turmeric essential oil, some shavings of ginger, and some cayenne pepper. Why not, right? Take one of those babies every day, your immune system's gonna be on fire. Okay, who's ever just signing on, please say hello. Let me know what you're doing this weekend and let me know what you do to be well. Even if you're watching this in replay, I still wanna see, because I come back and stock the comments on a regular basis. Um, another favorite, and I'm only showing you because I'm gonna take a sip, who loves kombucha? Thumbs up in the comments if you love kombucha. Mm. How about grumpy face if you hate kombucha? Because there's a few of you out there that I've met that really does not like it. My sister is one of them, she can't stand it. So, okay, well let's get started. We're talking about illness to wellness spectrum. This is something when I was in brick and mortar practice, I went through with almost every single patient because it is imperative that we shift our understanding from knowing that if you have no symptoms, you are well, okay? I'll tell you a little story. Uh, somebody was at my house, he shall remain nameless, and he came downstairs and I was making a smoothie. And he made some crack, some joke about it, um, for whatever reason, hey, Cynthia. Um, and I challenged him. A little bit on it. I said, well, you know, smoothies would be good for you. Why don't you try them in the morning? Oh, Heather, if it ain't broke, I'm not going to fix it. And I thought to myself, oh, okay. Easily 100 pounds overweight, three surgeries last year, no exercise, 100% processed food. And because there wasn't a specific sign or symptom in the moment, the understanding or the paradigm was that I'm fine. There's no issues. Well, we're gonna blow that one out of the water today. Let me tell you. Hi, Cynthia, great to see you. Off you go, enjoy your massage. Okay, illness to wellness spectrum. This is how we're gonna blow the, the, the lid off, kind of what paradigms are around wellness and illness. We have two circles here, illness and wellness. Hi, Hillary. Illness, oh, that's wellness. Illness to wellness, okay? And you see how there's a line in between the two. I want you to keep this image in your head because we're gonna be talking about it the whole time for our, our visit today. 
And yes, sunny March. In fact, I'm in Arizona right now. It is a whopping 70 something degrees. I got out for an inline skate just before the show and I was almost crying. I was so happy. It was awesome. When we are ill, when we are inside the circle of illness, inside that circle, so inside that, that circle, it's when we have demonstrative signs of illness. We have a headache, we have flu symptoms, we are legit not well, okay? That's simple. But if you take a tiny step outside of that, right there, would you assess that the person who is standing just outside that illness circle is well? Let me ask you with another question. What is one of the very first signs of heart disease? Can anybody answer? Well, I got a few of you out there. One of the very first signs of heart disease is a fatal heart attack, okay? The day before a person has a fatal heart attack, there are no signs or symptoms. Is that person well? No, they're not. So standing just outside that circle of illness does not mean in any way, shape, or form that your body is optimized, that you are healthy, that you are living at your best potential, that you are well. It means none of that. Good job, Cynthia. Good job, Hillary. So that's the first thing, is that you don't know, we don't know a lot of times, just because of lack of signs or symptoms, where we are on that spectrum. Just because, you know, we could be right next to the illness circle or we could be closer to the wellness circle. So how do we work our way toward the wellness circle? That's the key thing. Obviously, whole foods, moving our bodies, exercising well, mindfulness, managing our stress better, love, kindness, gratitude, all of those things, of course, are gonna shift us toward the wellness spectrum. But there's a couple of things that we need to be aware of. That tightrope between the two circles is not in a vacuum, okay? If you do nothing, like my friend, if you do nothing, you are starting to slide toward the illness circle. And here's why. We are like plants. We have a life cycle. Our cells have only so, cells, DNA, everything in our body has only so many opportunities to replicate. Things start to slow down as we age. There's a natural flow to that. And so if we do absolutely nothing, our natural course is to head toward a dirt nap. So we have to lean in to that line along towards wellness. We have to lean in a little harder with each passing year. That is just the reality of it. Because doing nothing, there is no, um, there's, there, you are either on one side or the other. <laughs> there is no just, I'm gonna just hang here on this spectrum. Nobody gets to stand right there and just, oops, sorry, and just hang out. We have to be, working toward wellness or we're falling toward illness, number one. Number two, like I'm saying, if we are aging, which we all are, then each passing year, we have to be a little more intentional, a little bit more uh, aware and disciplined and directive in how we spend our time and how we work toward that wellness circle. And the good news is, is that we absolutely can do it, okay? Sometimes when I tell this story, people are like, I'm so discouraged because it seems like we're running against a total headwind. And at times it may feel like that for sure. But there are lots of times that we can gain momentum on that spectrum of illness to wellness, and we can get very close, if not inside the wellness circle, at any age, 60, 70, 80, 90. We just have to be aware of some basics. So consistency is number one. Consistency, I would say, might be the most important in helping us shuffle toward that wellness circle. Doing one thing once a week for an hour is not as effective as five minutes every day. And I think a lot of you can say that in just about any kind of practice. 
a meditation practice, a workout practice, an eating well practice, right? Five minutes of attention each of seven days is better than 60 minutes of attention just one day. That's, that's number one. Number two is having a deep-seated wellness why. Now, a couple of the people who are watching right now know all about the wellness why because they are members of the Change Cave, and that's one of the first things we do to onboard new members because it's so essential. If you are not grounded in a deep sensing wellness why that will get you out of bed at five in the morning, that will make you set aside time on Sunday to meal prep because you know how important it is, then it is going to be very easy to get derailed and start to slide backwards along that spectrum. Number three, support. We can't do this alone. One of my adages for the change cave is, aren't you tired of doing this wellness thing alone? Because you know what? It is lonely. Working out, prepping meals, a lot of the, and meditating and doing all of those things, first of all, it can be overwhelming with all the information out there. And if you don't have a proper support system of folks that are doing it along with you and that you're kind of all on the same path, it's very easy to get tossed around in the waves and get discouraged and then give up. And then we know which way, which direction we're going on the spectrum. Clear strategy. That means spending time in a plan, investing in a plan of how are you personally as an individual going to be well? What are you going to do? What kinds of workouts are you going to do? How do you want to spend uh, your time as far as stretching, flexibility, meditation, yoga, how many minutes a week do you think you can work out or exercise or move your body? How many minutes a week do you want to dedicate to making sure you're feeding yourself good, wholesome food? How many minutes a week do you want to spend with close, loving friends, belly to belly? That's so important. Isolating ourselves is one of the most current deep pathologies that are that we suffer. So making sure that we're, we are socializing. We need to plan that. It's not going to happen on its own. And so we need to open our day timers and we need to mark in there non-negotiable appointments with ourselves for these very, very important wellness strategies. Do you do that? Do you do that consistently and not just once a year? Do you check back in every quarter or every month to go, how am I doing on this? What do I need to tweak? What do I want to add? What do I want to try that's different? Okay, so we have to remember that simply not feeling ill or not having a symptom does not mean you're optimized. That's my word of the year, by the way, optimization, because optimization, we are going to be spending our time doing different things. Life is short. I want to get the most out of every one of those minutes. So I want to be optimized in how I spend my time. I want to be optimized in how I make myself well. I want to optimize my time with my family and friends. So it's my word of the year, but when we are focusing on optimizing and not merely preventing or early detecting problems before they arise, but we're actually like, how good can we get? How amazing can we express this whole body now? So that's exciting. Um, feeling energetic, mobile, strong, rested are all signs of feeling well. Again, not just lack of signs or symptoms. One of the biggest things is that baby steps count. Okay, do not get discouraged. You guys have got this. Taking the tiniest step today and maybe another little one tomorrow, they build on each other and they create a foundation of potential for you to optimize that health profile, uh, your health ambitions, achieve your health goals. So I wanted to share that with you. I'm going to end with a story about dog sled. I'm going to first just give you one more shot of this so you remember illness, oops, illness to wellness. We want to be over here, people, okay? Now, here, we're pretty good. We can even get better. So we can keep pushing along that spectrum with all of our great choices that we're making every day. And if you make a bad choice, it can be corrected, okay? Don't beat yourself up, be kind to yourself, let it go and move on. Here's my story. Brent and I were up at Sun Peaks uh, in British Columbia, it's a ski hill, and they have a very cool dog sledding outfit. Now, some of you may have opinions about dog sledding, and I did a little bit before, but I will tell you these dogs are better taken care of, better fed than I am. And if I could show you the video of them right before we took off on the dog sled, 
they were so freaking excited and could hardly stand it. They wanted to go so bad. And I thought to myself, if I could only be that excited to exercise every time it uh, came up for me, instead of sometimes really, really not wanting to do it. They were so excited. And our sled guide took off and off we went and she's telling us all about the history of these beautiful dogs and and what they get to do and how they feed them this incredible food and how they get to rest and how they have this community and all of these things and uh, it was just fascinating and then all of a sudden she stopped them like we'd only been gone two or three minutes and she stops and the dogs all lie down they're panting and they're eating snow and they're picking snow out of their paws and they're looking around and then they kind of start barking like, what are we doing? Can we please go now? And we went. And then she did it again. Stop. Another three, four, five minutes. Full out running. Three, four, five minutes. Stopped. We stopped the sled. Everybody, down they go. Eating snow, looking around, barking at each other, biting tails. And then we go again. So I'm like, how long can these dogs go without stopping? And she's like, oh, they can go 50K. Like, she, she was talking about some of these big dog sled races. And I said, so why do you stop them? And she said, oh, they can go 50K, but if we wanna optimize their health and we don't wanna wear them out and we don't want injuries and we don't want um, fatigue and adrenal issues and stress issues, then we way preemptively slow them down, give them a break, and then we go again. She doesn't have to do that. The dogs would be fine. Ain't broke, don't fix it. But they do that because they care so much about the health of the animal and they wanna optimize their lifespan. They wanna keep them as healthy as possible. And isn't that true for us, right? Don't we periodically need to stop, rest, okay? So that was, I thought, a good example of the illness to wellness spectrum of here she was optimizing this dog, these dogs' health on their behalf by way preemptively doing support and care for them, even though they were perfectly fine to keep going, she was just being very preventative, which I thought was awesome. Okay, if you have any questions, please put them down below. Remember that March 15th, I've got Dr. Noah DeCoyer here on epigenetics. Next week, we have Dr. Reed Cooter, who is physical therapist in Issaquah. If you guys remember the last show she did with me, it was hysterical. And uh, it was one of the most watched shows. And he is coming back to do another show because that one was so much fun. So that's next week. Dr. Noah, Noah DeCoyer the following week. Please continue to come back here on Fridays at noon. I really enjoy seeing you. Again, our mini junk for today was Viva Organics. Love it. Immunity boost. But remember, you can make your own with half apple cider vinegar, half lemon juice, cayenne pepper, drop of turmeric oil, and shaved ginger. Okay, that's a great little immunity shot. You can make your own at home and just take those periodically. Take them every day if you want to. And that's a nice little tip for you before you go into the weekend. Okay, I love all you guys. Thank you so much. Please share this with your friends and family. The, the most important thing is that we get all of this wellness information out to the masses. We have got to turn this Titanic around. And I would love to be a part of that. So please do share. And we will see you soon. Okay. Mwah! Happy weekend.